we've raised a bit of a conundrum with respect to transitions between states with different electron configurations in which an electron essentially moves from one orbital to another in order to facilitate the transition. If there is no orbital overlap or no net overlap between the initial and final orbitals for the moving electron, quote unquote, the transition is forbidden at zero order because we have a zero overlap integral. The classic example of this is the homo luo transition in simple carbonyl compounds, which involves an N, a non-bonding orbital on oxygen, and the pi star anti-bonding orbital between carbon and oxygen of the carbonyl group. These two orbitals are at right angles, and this is very easy to see using the standard NBO orbital shapes. So, for example, here for our, our favorite molecule acetone, I've laid down the pi star orbital in yellow and green, and the N orbital associated with a 2p orbital in red and blue. And we can see that the familiar shapes of the orbitals are in play and that they are interpenetrating to some extent. There are regions where the orbitals overlap. However, they do so in such a way that positive and negative overlap exactly cancel one another. And this view potentially shows that. You can see this cloverleaf sort of shape where they overlap. There is no net overlap here because for each positively overlapping lobe, there is a negatively overlapping lobe. So this transition into pi star is forbidden at zero order. But we've already said a great deal about carbonyl n pi star excited states, and if you go out there and look for carbonyl n pi star excited states, they have been heavily, heavily studied and heavily applied. So in practice, the n to pi star transition does take place. How does that happen? We're going to understand that in this video through the idea of vibronic coupling. The notion that the molecule is not static, the nuclei and the atoms are moving, and as they move, the electron configuration changes. Nuclear and electronic motions are not exactly decoupled. They do not act completely independently of one another, and when they don't, we open up the door to transitions that are forbidden at zero order because we're changing the positions of the orbitals and the shapes of the orbitals as the nuclei change positions, and this can introduce or overlap where there was none before. That's the essence of vibronic coupling. So we've talked about how the end of pi star transition is forbidden at zero order. Now let's take a look at some of the vibrations of, here we've moved from acetone to formaldehyde, but it's the same idea, how some of these vibrations can facilitate the end of pi star transition through a mechanism called vibronic coupling. This webpage lists a number of different vibrations of the formaldehyde molecule. And I want to start with the CO and CH stretches. And so here we see the CO bond stretching. You can see how the energy changes as the stretch takes place. And the thing I want to emphasize for our purposes is that the molecular plane of symmetry remains intact as this CO stretch takes place because all that's happening is a stretching along the bonding axis. So this vibration has no effect on the pi orbital, which is located entirely above and below the molecular plane for formaldehyde. It has no orbital density in the plane, and because nothing's happening above or below the plane, that orbital is completely unaffected. And it has essentially no spatial effect on the n orbital also, because again, all that's happening is that p orbital is moving a little bit farther away from the carbon. There is no bending taking place, and that p orbital is symmetric with respect to the molecular plane, and so is unchanged by this vibration that is also symmetric with respect to that plane. In fact, the same argument applies to the CH vibrations. These don't cause any sort of bending of the molecule that breaks the symmetry, and so they cannot facilitate the end of pi star transition. The n and pi star orbitals are orthogonal along the entire vibrations. Vibration two is described as out of plane. Let's take a look at this. Now, notice what happens with vibration two all of a sudden the symmetry is broken. Notice that the hydrogens are moving above and below the molecular plane. And so if we pause this vibration, we see that the molecular plane is no longer there. And this has a significant effect on the pi star orbital. 
in the language of hybridization, the hybridization of the central carbon has changed, right? At this moment, the hybridization of this carbon is more like sp3 than sp2. And so what was a pure p orbital on this carbon has rehybridized, we, we might say. And this facilitates unequal orbital overlap above and below that carbon. And this results in net non-zero overlap with the n orbital. This is the essence of vibronic coupling. The idea that as a vibration takes place, we reach a structure where there is a chance that an electron, for example, in an n orbital can transition into the pi star orbital through non-zero orbital overlap. So to sum up, we saw that the in-plane vibrations have no effect. The in-plane vibrations cannot facilitate an in to pi star transition. However, the out-of-plane vibration enables an otherwise forbidden process to take place. And this could be internal conversion from S1 to S0 or S0 to S1, or it could be an absorption process. We'll dig into this equation in more detail in the next video. It's what's known as Fermi's golden rule. But for the time being, all that I'll note is that this is just a more precise form of the dependence of the rate or the probability of a transition on the matrix element that we saw earlier. The matrix element is right here. Here it appears in its squared form. And more precisely, this is the matrix element for the vibronic perturbation. HV is a perturbation that mixes the vibration with the electronic wave functions and allows us, for example, a non-zero probability of going from the initial to the final state. We'll get to the remainder of these terms in the next video, but for the time being, I'll just point out that this rho is the density of states in the final state, and this should be an h bar. h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, and in, in some sense appears here just to make the units work out.